tests, especially sharp cursors. I can't imagine you taking your licensing exam and not uh, and being surprised that you aren't aware of sharp cursors. Uh, the whole purpose of these ligament distress tests is to assess for stability in the upper cervical spine. Okay? The majority of them, two of them, sharp purses and the uh, transverse ligament stress test, are going to are going to really assess the relationship between C1 and C2. You want that contact of the dens against C1 to keep the position of C1 right in place because the spinal cord goes right through the spinal canal. And if the transverse ligament that acts as a buttress posterior to the dens is laxed or disturbed in any way, then what can happen with C1 is a movement forward. And that's that ends the good day when that happens. <laughs> it's not good because all that happens now is the spinal cord gets compressed and could even run the risk of being severed. So what they've done and what they've developed over the course of time are a couple ligamentous stress tests, one of which is sharp cursors, and it has, some, it has decent sensitivity but even better specificity to, it, to assess that. And then we also have what's called the transverse ligament stress test at the bottom that I want to take you through. The only other one that we're going to talk about today also that's of any clinical importance is the ALAR ligament stress test. The ALAR ligament comes off almost like the ropes, the ropes that are holding the model together here, and they attach to the inside of the occiput. Okay, so they come off in a, in a Y-shaped pattern like my fingers are doing right now. And what they do is they prevent excessive rotation uh, from occurring with the relationship of the occiput on C1. You will not be tested on this for this exam. This I'm giving to you because you need it to be going out into the world, all right? But the alar ligaments are coming out like a Y, like a Y. And again, they're protecting from excessive rotation of occiput and atlas, okay? Because too much rotation, again, ruins the day. Bad, uh, bad thing that that happens. <laughs> so there is ways to assess for that, and we're going to do that right now. What I want to do first is demonstrate sharp cursors test. It's listed at the top of the uh, first picture there. I guess we could zoom out for this one. I think it looks like that. <laughs> you have to see the table. Everyone's going to have to be <laughs> kneeling down to see what's going on. So if I can have somebody up here really quick to go through these. Pretty quick, Eric, if you don't mind. Or you know what? Somebody actually with uh, shorter here. Yeah. That, that way you can see the contact easier. No, no bias meant there. <laughs> Now, what would be some of the signs and symptoms that they may have laxity? The five Ds, the three Ns, remember those? Dyclopia, dizziness, dysphagia, dysarthria, nausea, nystagmus, numbness, especially perioral numbness. That's, that's an indicator there. Drop attacks, cord signs, things like that. So actually with sharp purses, what's unique about this test, because you're actually providing added stability to the spine when you do the test, you often, uh, an often uh, effect of doing this test is actually a relief in symptoms. So that's kind of a nice thing. And uh, good to have your patient somewhat seated because should there be uh, the, the event where there is an instability and there's a problem with the, the circulation in the, in the cord, at least they're already sitting. So if they pass out or they have that drop attack phenomenon, then at least you've covered yourself. And covered yourself meaning you're protecting your patient. Come sit facing this way. <coughs> you guys, I still have like, I might be shy one hand out back there. So. So the whole goal here is to kind of hold one and move one, right? But you're hoping for not a large excursion of movement when you do this test. 
what you want to do is you want to be able to palpate the spinous process of C2, and you're going to provide a little bit of support to C2, just like I'm doing right now. So I basically <coughs> wedge and cradle the spinous process of C2 in my, between my knuckle and my thumb. Okay? But what I'm now going to do here, I'm going to ask for just the slightest bit of flexion subcranially, and you're going to see that I'm going to now bring the occiput and C1 in that direction, A to P, while I provide stability at C2, so I'm blocking it. So I'm causing the occiput and C1 to go closer to the dent. Ideally, when I'm doing this maneuver, I should feel no excursion because the atlantal dental space is tiny, and if it's being maintained and it's stable, there should be no excursion. If there was laxity in that transverse ligament and C1 and the occiput were enabled to go forward, there'd be symptoms. And then when I did the, what we'll call a relocation, but they don't usually often refer to it in sharp pursers, when I perform sharp pursers, I bring it back to its original resting place where it should be. And hence, the symptoms often will decrease. And a lot of patients say, wow, that feels really great. I don't know what you're doing. I'll say, yeah, I know, but I gotta let go now. And then all the symptoms kind of come back. But that's a great screening test, okay? Like I said, sensitivity of 69 and specificity of 96. So you can really hold on to this, uh, this test is something is pretty reliable, all right? So again, to perform it, you're blocking C2. You're making your contact on the occiput. <coughs> Tiny little, tiniest little bit of subcranial flexion, just to help with the get them in uh, the movement more easily. And then you're going to try to translate or push, do an A to P of occiput and C1 with respect to C2. All right. so it's that. Hey, Dr. Lemieux, how are you? Welcome to Mania Therapy Three. <laughs> All right, the next two. So that's sharp pressures. What I want to do next is show you the alar ligament test and then also the transverse ligament test. So you can lay down on your back. <coughs> yeah, any questions about sharp pursers? It's kind of, it's, I don't want to say it's straightforward because it's still, you're, you're thinking about what's happening, but it is that straightforward. Stabilize one, hold one, try to move the others. And you don't want to have that movement. But if you feel that your patient might be unstable, you definitely want to be doing that test. Now, for the ALAR ligament. Uh, yeah, for this one. <coughs> Again, you want to have a reference point. So the easiest reference point here is going to be C2. And you'll see in the way that I have it listed here that the patient is resting supine, the therapist supports the patient's head with one hand and monitors the position of C2 spinous process with the other hand. When I say monitors the position of C2, what you want to do is you want to be on the lateral aspect of C2. And when you're side tilting the head to the right, you want to be on the left lateral aspect of C2. When you're side tilting the head to the left, you want to be on the right lateral aspect of C2, spinous process. And the reason for that is because once you do that slight side cranial tilt to the side, those ligaments get taut and they pull on C2. And you'll feel an abrupt movement against your finger as long as there's ligamentous stability. If you feel that you can go further or you don't feel C2 come into your finger when you do that contralateral side tilt, then there's a problem with the laxity, or there's a problem with the ligamentous integrity. And this actually needs to be performed with a little bit of neutral, a little bit of flexion, and a little bit of extension. So that's gonna be all three positions. So really eat. Do you have the problem if C2 does it, if you don't feel C2 come into your finger? Yep because that means that the ligaments aren't doing their job at stabilizing, there's laxity, and I'm allowed to go further with the occiput. 
if it's locked in place like it should be, it should be so taut that there should be no, no uh, extra excursion. Every time I side tilt, C2 is going to kick out and I'm going to feel it in this finger. Okay? <clears throat> and if I'm doing it like this on the model, I'm that way. I'll just hold it up like this. I'm supporting the occiput. What I can do with my fingers is be on each side of the spinous process of C2. So if I side tilt the cranium to the right, I should feel C2 kick into my left finger. If I side tilt the cranium to the left, I should feel the spinous process kick into my right finger. That's it. And you'll feel it. Once you do this test, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so cradling the occiput, I have my right finger on the right lateral aspect of C2, I have my left finger on the left lateral aspect of C2, spinous process. I side tilt to the right, I feel C2 kick right in. I side tilt to the left, I feel C2 kick right in. And when I say kick right in, let me go back to be more clear. I side tilt to the left, I feel the spinous process of C2 kick into my left finger. Come back to neutral. I side tilt to the left. <coughs> I feel C2 spinous process kick into my right finger. Okay. Now I already feel that that's the case, that there's stability, but I still have to check it in a little bit of flexion and in a little bit of extension. So just a little tiny bit of subcranial flexion. Again, if I go right, I feel it kick left. If I go left, I feel it kick right. I reassess it again in extension just to confirm everything. I side tilt right, I feel it kick left. I side tilt left and I feel it kick right. That's it. And it has to be positive in all three for it to be considered lax. That's why you do it in all three positions. That's just the rule for the test. It's not my rule, it's the rule for the test. The last one is the transverse ligament stress, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cradle the occiput in my palm of my hand, and my fingers are going to go right along the posterior arch of C1. All I'm going to do is a very similar maneuver like we did with distractive inhibition, where we just cradled up and went into the soft tissue, except I'm going to intentionally try to translate C1 forward. Now, if the transverse ligament is doing its job, it shouldn't go anywhere, okay? Hey, Dr. McLuhan. <clears throat> and that's what I'm hoping for, okay? And then you can hold this position for about 15 to 20 seconds, just in case that there's muscle guarding going on and get a feel for what is happening. Okay. So those are the three needed. I believe you can. <laughs> That's just my opinion. What you're going to eventually do is you're going to sink into those soft tissues and come across that posterior articular pillar. There's no spinous process at C1. You should be able to get to that uh, posterior arch of C1. It's a posterior pillar, sorry. Posterior arch. Right. Good. So sharp pursers, alar ligament, and transverse. Okay? Break up into your groups. If you have any questions.